Hello, my friends. Welcome back to our channel. Today we discuss the fourth task of the first round of the 2022 Federal Mathematics Competition in Germany. For any natural number k, we denote its largest divisor that is not divisible by 3 as a k. And denote the summation of a1 to a n as s n. There are two conclusions required to be proved in this task. First, if n is written as a ternary number, it is equivalent between that, the amount of the digits in the ternary number being equal to 1 can be divisible by 3, and that, sn can be divisible by 3. Second, there are infinitely many sn that can be divisible by the cube of 3. Why not give a try, and we will come back soon. The statement of this task is quite complicated. So let's first clarify what it is really talking about. What exactly this AK and SN are? Let's make a table and list K starting from 1. Regardless of whether it can be divisible by 3 or not, we write the largest divisor of each number. In fact, the largest divisor of any natural number is itself. We put those results in the first row. But the numbers that are divisible by 3 are not what we expect in this task. So we divide all the numbers that are divisible by 3 by 3. We call them as AK1 and write them down in the next row. In the same way, in this row, the numbers that are not divisible by 3 are satisfied, but not those divisible ones. So we will continue to divide them by 3, and we will denote those in the next row as AK2. And so on. In fact, the SN required in the task is the summation of all the numbers now in this table. To discuss the problem whether SN can be divisible by 3, we can calculate the remainder when SN is divided by 3. That is, the remainder when the summation of all the numbers in this table is divided by 3. It is also equal to the remainder of dividing by 3 the summation of the remainders of firstly dividing all those numbers in this table by 3. So let's calculate the remainders of dividing each number in the table by 3. We call them BK. Now let's arbitrarily select a number n, assuming that it is not smaller than 3 to the power of r, and smaller than 3 to the power of r plus 1. In this case, we can write down bk of each row one by one, all the way to the row r. Then let's see what the summation of bk in each row is equal to. We start from the first row. For instance, we take n as 10. Before this n, every three consecutive terms add up to 3. So the remainder of them divided by 3 is 0. So what is the result of this row? It depends on what the remainder of n divided by 3 is. If the remainder of n divided by 3 is 1, then the result of this row leaves only one number, which equals 1. If the remainder of it divided by 3 is 2, then 1 plus 2 is left, which equals 3, so the remainder of it divided by 3 becomes 0 again, so the result of this row is 0. What if the remainder of this n divided by 3 is 0? 1 plus 2 plus 0 equals 3. Of course, the remainder of it divided by 3 is equal to 0. The result of this row is still 0. We summarize them in a function, xm. When m is equal to 1, xm is equal to 1. And when m is equal to 2 or 0, xm is equal to 0. So the result of this row is the value of x when m is equal to the remainder of n divided by 3. OK, we're done with this row. Now let's look at the next row. We find that there is an interesting scaling relationship, that is, if we divide the position labels of the numbers in this row by 3, and then take their integer parts, then they are the same as the previous rows. So the result of this row is the value of x when the m is equal to the remainder of dividing by 3 the integer part of n divided by 3. And so on. The result in row r is the value of x when m is the remainder of dividing by 3 the integer part of n divided by 3 to the power of r. Now let's recall how to write n as a ternary number. The 8th digit of this number is the remainder of dividing by 3 the integer part of n divided by 3 to the power of i. Now it is very clear, we can write each item in the previous formula as the value of the function x when m is the corresponding digit of the ternary number. Recall the definition of x. In this formula, only when the ternary digit is 1, the item is 1, and all the others are 0. So it is equal to the remainder of the amount of these ternary digits that are 1, divided by 3. So we can conclude now, it is equivalent between that, the amount of the digits in the ternary number being equal to 1 can be divisible by 3, and that SN can be divisible by 3. Now let's look at the second conclusion. 
How to prove that there are infinitely many SN that can be divisible by the cube of 3. Before discussing how many SN are there divisible by the cube of 3, let's see if there is any SN that is divisible by the cube of 3. We can list some SN first. And find that, when n is equal to 20, we have found an SN that is divisible by the cube of 3, which is equal to 162. That is, 6 times cube of 3. Can we find the next SN that is divisible by the cube of 3? In fact, we don't necessarily have to find the real next one. The so-called next one should be the next one that can be deduced by that S20 is divisible by the cube of 3. That is to say, we only need to find a sufficient condition to prove that, the next SN that can be divisible by the cube of 3 basing on the current SN for infinitely many iterating times. And there is no need to care about whether this condition is necessary or not. So how to find it? We still have to go back to the table of AN. We need to find some rules in this table to derive the next SN. Going back to the scaling relationship we found, now we need to describe this relationship more precisely. That is, AI of one row, is equal to A3 by I of the next row. If we know an SR, it is equal to the summation of AI for each row. We change the A of any row into the A corresponding A to the next row of S3 by R. And we find that, its difference from S3 by R is only the first row of S3 by R. That is, the summation of A10 to A3 by R0. It is very easy to calculate this summation. Its difference from the summation of 1 to 3 by R is that all the multiples of 3 become 0. Then according to the sum of arithmetic sequence formula, we obtain that. S3 by R is equal to SR plus the square of 3 by R. From this, we can also calculate S3 by R plus 1, which is 3 by R plus 1 more than S3 by R. We can also calculate S3 by R plus 2, which is 3 by R plus 2 more than S3 by R plus 1. And this one is very nice, because after sorting it out we found that, it is equal to SR plus 3 times the square of R plus 1. What does it tell us? If R is equal to a natural number I times 3 plus 2. That is, if S3 by I plus 2 is divisible by the cube of 3. We can obtain that, S3 by R plus 2 equals S3 by I plus 2. And then add 3 times the square of 3 by I plus 3. Note that, both of these two items are divisible by the cube of 3. That is to say, in this case, S3 by R plus 2 is also divisible by the cube of 3. Going back to our previous S20. We found that 20 is exactly 3 times 6 plus 2. That is to say, if S20 can be divisible by the cube of 3, then we can follow the rule of 3 times I plus 2. To achieve the next S1 by 1 for infinitely many times. For example, 3 times 20 plus 2 equals 62. 3 times 62 plus 2 equals 188. And so on. In fact, S62 is equal to 55 times the cube of 3. And S188 is equal to 496 times the cube of 3. Of course, don't forget that what we show here is only a sufficient condition, rather than a necessary one. For example, S91 is equal to 116 times the cube of 3. Which is also satisfactory, but 91 is not in this sequence. But this does not matter at all. Because by using the sufficient conditions, we have already proved that, there are infinitely many SN that can be divisible by the cube of 3. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.